Mark Fusino. Well, here's Jeff Kerber at 142 pounds for Iowa. We weren't at all sure he would be out there tonight. He weighed in along with Greg Randall, but Jeff Kerber had a little bit of an injury in his last match in his neck, and there was some question about whether he'd be ready to go, but he's out there against Wayne Sharp. This Kerber is a real outstanding athlete, four-time state champion here in the state of Iowa, so he's got a lot of credits behind him. This ought to be a good one because uh, Kerber is an outstanding wrestler, and Sharp, who was just taken down, has a lot of fight in him. Well, Wayne Sharp is a, is a two-time state champion out of Alaska. Not many athletes are coming out of Alaska, but Kerber did a nice job of going into a high crotch there and changing it over to a double to get the takedown. Two to nothing in favor of Kerber. Caution, Kerber. Caution really against well Kerber. He was a little bit too quick. Because they have to stay set. They have to remain set until the official blows the whistle. Now you'll see the official get off and change the angle so that they can't see him. And they won't anticipate what he's going to do. There, uh, Sharp from Iowa State is attempting to do roll action. And Kerber laid his body out flat and made a lot of uh, resistance just by extending his body away from the arm that he had tied up. And now, of course, he's got one arm caught. He's going to try to take that arm and put it up behind his back. It's Hawkeye, the Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, where tonight you're looking at Iowa against Iowa State wrestling. I'm Doug Brown with Chuck Patton on Iowa Public Television. And the score in this match is two to nothing. Iowa State leads 11 to two after three matches. Right there, Sharp wanted to control Kerber's wrist. The man from Iowa State wanted to control the, the top man's wrist and then hop his hips over top in a Granby, but the man on top from Iowa wisely pulled his hips down and in so he couldn't get free. And he just intentionally released that and gave him an escape point. Two to one in favor of Kerber. Jeff feels that this is his year. He's, uh, he hasn't won a national championship yet. He's placed twice, and maybe this is it. He's in very sharply on the leg, and quick takedown. Nice single. And he has the wrist tied up, and he put a lot of pressure on him to take his base away right there. He's been able to go on that outside single twice in a row now. That time he caught him leaning in so much that he went right by him and just scored an easy takedown with it. This is the weight at which Joe Gibbons one point goes to Kerber. Now something happened. Something happened under there, and Harold Nichols is coming over to talk about it. Right. Referee is telling the uh, he coach him. that he bit him. His arm was in the air, and the man bit him. And here's the outside single. See, he penetrates deep in and turns the corner real well. Gets around behind his opponent, changes directions. Score the takedown. Then wisely drives and puts the pressure to him to knock him down. Well, I haven't seen that in a while. A point for biting. Five to one now, and Kerber is biting well. Up comes okay. Sharp. He trails five to two. A little fisticuffs going on, and the official feels that that's uh, a little unnecessary, and he doesn't want that to take place. So he stopped him, asked him to cool it, and get back to wrestling rather than boxing. As you see, Kerber's up by three. Kerber's back in the position where he got that outside single. He has that arm with the inside control. That's what he did last time. He just pulled on that arm a little bit and then went to the outside. I started to say this is the position at which uh, Iowa State expected to have Joe Gibbons this year. He's still out with a knee injury, although he's just, I understand, begun running again, and maybe back in a couple of weeks if all works out well. Kerber has made the offensive shots in this match. Sharp so far has just kind of defended against it, but he's been very feisty. End of the first period with Kerber leading five to two over Sharp. Those are the uh, All-Americans at Iowa State last year. You see the two at the top are back this year, although John Thorne is not uh, in the lineup, being red-shirted. Nate Carr, you see, was a national champion, and there were a couple of seconds in there in the upper weights. 
Now, this period, third period, second period, Kerber starts on top. Sharp was unable to roll. But Sharp really does a good job of keeping his base underneath him. The man from Iowa State does a good job of not letting his hips get broken down and stay down there. He keeps his knees underneath him well. So it makes it harder for the top man from Iowa to put him down on the mat and control him. Jeff Kerber, four-time state champion at Emmitsburg High School. Now he, now he takes away that base, and he has the wrist tied up at the same time. So it puts a lot more pressure on the down man to get back to his base now. Kerber putting on a very good ride. He has more than two minutes of riding time with about a minute left in the second period. Well, you just think that the man on top would be able to take him and turn him over, but it's a much more difficult job than it looks like because the man is keeping his knees underneath him. And you just don't get out there with his knees because the man on the bottom can stand up. Back comes the young man from Alaska. One of those people who uh, feels right at home when the weather gets down to below 20, 25 below the way it has in this coldest of December's uh, just passed. Kerber again on top. He's, he's doing a tough job of riding now. He's been able to break Sharp down a little bit uh, more often in his last couple of attempts. As fatigue enters in, it starts to be uh, easier to take that man down. So it is tougher to be on the bottom than it is to be on the top. I think if you gave any bottom man his option, do you want to stay down there? Do you want to get on top of the guy or stand on your feet? He'd say, I don't want to stay down here. Now Kerber has him flattened out. There's a good, strong bar arm on the near side, and there's a warning against Sharp on the bottom. Calling the call on Sharp. Just a little bit of time left, and this is the second period. And Kerber's looking awfully strong. Well, now that he has the arm, now he can start getting out and try to turn him to his back. He got back balls, two back balls. If he had been able to keep that position for three seconds, for five seconds or more, he would have had three points. And as soon as the arm came out from underneath the bottom man, then the top man could put it on his back. So now he has the arm up on the back. Now he can get out to the side because he has the arm trapped, and then he posts a shoulder. In other words, he puts a shoulder down and then gets out toward the head. As soon as he goes toward the head, then the back goes toward the mat. A near fall with just a few seconds left. Kerber has three minutes and 21 seconds of riding time and a five-point lead. That riding time would be worth a point if he had still at least a minute more than his opponent at the end. Well, he got to his feet, but he has to try to break the man's grasp. And, of course, the, the back man is responsible to try to take his opponent to the mat. That's a point for stalling for Kerber. Mike Allen felt he should have taken him down off his feet sooner. Made a, a it is stronger the, effort. It is the responsibility of the man in the rear standing position to put his opponent down. He can't just stand behind him. Eight to two is the score now. Kerber's managed to get into the wizard at an overhook position with his right arm, you see. As long as that man keeps his hand all the way across the back and controls the hip, then he still is in control. So Iowa State still has control in this position. Stalemate. Stalemate with uh, Sharp still in control. Back to the center. We have a minute 25 to go. Iowa State leads in the meet 11 to two. But the Hawks got a draw against previously, well, he's still undefeated, but previously totally unmarred George Patterson at 134. Mark Trezino came through. Sharp lost his position there, and Kerber reacted quickly, came around for a reversal. It is now 10 and 11 to 2 after the escape and the takedown. He's doing a lot of talking to the official. All he's got to do is get back to his base. Now, Kerber has the arm. He's trying to break his base down by driving the hips forward. Kerber's putting on a fine show here for the Hawks. He's, uh, he doesn't look like somebody who... Uh, well, he's hit. got the arm out again. Now, he's got the arm again. This is where he used the leverage, but the man from Iowa State has his hand underneath him and has built his base back up. 
11 to 2, 30 seconds to go. What's he saying there, Chuck? They're saying pull that arm across them. They're asking their man from Iowa, pull the arm across to get underneath him because he needs three points in order to try to get a superior decision. We could get three points out of a near fall and it was held for five seconds. Jeez. He had him tipped, but not quite past the 45. It's 13 to 2, and he has riding time. Well, he's got it. Yes, he did. He, he pulled it back over and got it. And it's 14 to 2. They began to wrap up, uh, rank up scores in a hurry there, and I lost track for a second, but it was a 12 point difference. It's a 14 to 2 victory for Jeff Herbert, a big win for the Hawks. They get five points for the team total with that. Anything more than 11 points difference makes five for the team. And so it's now Iowa State.